I just lost all my souls while running back to a boss, so today we will talk about why souls-like games are trash. There are souls games and then there are souls likes. If you're here, you already know what the difference is, but if there's any confusion, these are souls and these are souls likes. Over the years, I probably played each from software title approximately a billion times, but I can't bring myself to finish most souls likes even once. Why can't I enjoy 99.9% .9 of souls likes? Am I the tenth dentist that is ruining the fun? Is it because of the bad animations, undercooked combat, misunderstood difficulty system, or generic dark fantasy setting without a story to back it up? Well, that sounded a bit negative, no? This is not a rant made by a Souls elitist to bash smaller titles. Right now they are too busy fighting each other over beating Rodan pre and post nerf. So let's just have some fun while the elitists are bragging about beating a boss a million other people also beat. There are so many small developers achieving amazing things with limited budgets. And the first hours of my Souls-like experiences are usually quite fun, but I barely finish them. So all this got me thinking, what is killing the fun of Souls-like titles for me. Souls-like is a genre that feeds from the stereotypes of From Software games. Wait, wait, a quick interruption? I feel like I will say the word Souls-like at least a billion times in this video, so let's play a little game. Write down how many times I say the word Souls-like throughout the entire video, and if the number is correct, I will actually send you the upcoming Lies of P DLC along with the base game if you don't have it. Only the first guy to comment though, I barely make any money from this so don't bankrupt me, please. If there's something so successful and profitable, there tends to be a lot of copies trying to capitalize on its success. When you ask an ordinary player to describe a Souls game, you will most likely hear about the difficulty, edgy characters and dark gritty atmosphere. Well, on surface they are all correct to an extent, but this is exactly where most of the Souls-like developers go wrong and this is what exactly what I will explore today. If I ask you what makes From Software games special, or what makes, let's say, Dark Souls 1 special at least. If you're familiar with the game, you will probably have a dozen answers already. There's the atmosphere, dark, charming, peaceful, yet scary. Presentation of the lore is on another level. Why did the game start in a prison cell? Who is this guy helping me? Why is there a dragon on the bridge? Where did this demon come from? Game first puts you in a questionable situation and then as your journey continues you find answers to all the mysteries. There's also level design. This is the part where you would see people get overly excited about that one elevator in Undead Parish. Oh my god it connects to Firelink Shrine? What? No way. I will keep it short. When I think of each Souls game they all have so many unique and great features about them. Huh, it's almost like I made a video about it. But thinking of Souls likes, not all but most of them feel like tech demos rather than a fully fleshed out game. Think of Mortal Shell, there's a unique mechanic related to shells. You find the remains of fallen warriors and claim them as your shell. You have Harrows, Teal, Solomon, Aerojim and Hadron. If I mispronounced any of the names, just live with it, I don't care. Each shell has its own thing. One is balanced, other one is slow, other one is fast, other one is doing magic, I don't know. It's a really fun mechanic with an okay upgrade system. And then there's the beginning zone, Falgrim. It's a beautiful, charming zone. It's quiet, beautiful, deadly. You can even chill with a frog, like it doesn't get better than this really. My first couple hours in this game was absolutely amazing. Hardening my shell to block attacks felt amazing. Then I also found a shell that complemented the way I wanted to play the game. It felt like I finally found the souls like I was looking for. After waiting Steam release an entire year due to Epic exclusivity of course. But then I realized game peaked there right in the beginning and it was all downhill from there. Upgrades were less than satisfactory, there were barely any weapons and the following zones turned in... Really? And the following zones turned into generic dark fantasy maps. Boss fights were underwhelming due to an undercooked shell system. Game had one mechanic which failed to evolve as the game continued. Another fun souls like Last Hero of Nostalgia also suffers from a similar issue. Foundations are right there, game has a creative fun mechanic, Nostalgia is cursed, day by day land is losing its 
pixel fidelity and you, a stick figure, are going to save the kingdom, return its fidelity, save the pixelated population, and you will even restore some pixelated equipment. It's unique, it's fun, it's goofy, but it fails to expand on its core feature. You will restore some bonfires and equipment, but sadly, it is all there is. There aren't complex mechanics, puzzles, boss fights related to the pixelated world. It starts as a unique game and then within an hour or two it becomes a generic Souls clone, as we see a lot with these titles. I want to enjoy this game, I want to finish it, but game itself doesn't feel finished. There's Lords of the Fallen 2014. Its unique mechanic is, um, it is, a. Um, I don't know, being a hot garbage, but if that's the case, I must say it's pretty good at it. Well, I won't bully this game now, I'm a decade late for it, so let me quickly uninstall it and talk about the other Souls likes. My point with the game mechanics and features is, they usually start with a good idea and then at one point in development, one thing that makes the game unique is abandoned. But when I talk about this problem, I should also point out that these are often small studios trying to build something incredible, and this is why I still buy and support small souls likes even though I often abandon my playthrough after a couple hours. Then there's the difficulty. Difficulty is what kickstarted from software's success, right? Right? wrong. A lot of people fail to comprehend this, but no, Demon Souls or Dark Souls didn't invent difficulty in video games, and it is not the foundation these games are built on. If Souls genre was actually defined by difficulty of the gameplay, well, buying a house in this economy would probably be the greatest Souls-like experience I could ever have. Surely it would be a delusional take to say from software titles lack the difficulty, but the way Souls games handle difficulty is where many Souls-like developers get it wrong. There's really, really thin border between a challenging, fair experience and a frustrating design being difficult for the sake of being difficult. Over years from software mastered their approach to challenging gameplay. For every obstacle on your path, there are 10 different solutions, and this is why you never need difficulty sliders for Souls games. So if you're struggling with a challenging boss, there's probably a way to make that fight much easier than its current state. Except Capra Demon, so you just have to power through that boss. There are no tactics, no nothing. Just go in, fail until you beat the boss by a chance. What most souls likes usually do with the design is make each encounter as painful as possible because this is what the genre is about, right? When you encounter two unsuspecting enemies that are enjoying the view, with another one waiting in the corner, looking for an opportunity to give you a little push, it's a nice little encounter. There's smart enemy placement, you fight an enemy you have probably fought a dozen times before, but this time it is not just an elite enemy waiting you in a room. It's a tricky encounter that adds a sweet twist to the experience and if you don't pay attention it puts you in a rather difficult but still fair situation. Whereas in many souls likes, difficulty comes from unfair numbers rather than smart placements and tricky encounters that require attention. When I was playing Lords of the Fallen, wait no, not this one. When I was playing Lords of the Fallen 2023, this design choice caught my attention. Areas between bosses are treated like fillers, there's no sense of journey. When I first explored Blight Town over a decade ago, it was annoying at times. I made a lot of mistakes, but it is a journey I still remember today. As I tried to descend over and over again, I figured even though these big enemies have a punishing moveset, they still give a lot of room for openings and you can just backstep them and abuse the iframes to give yourself a room to breathe. There are these poison dart guys, quite annoying especially if they inflict toxic status. But game gives you a good source of purple moss to deal with the poison. There are problematic enemies, but they all come with their own weaknesses and tactics. When I see the type of enemy approaching me in Blight Town, I know exactly how I should deal with it. Anyways, the point is, each enemy fits perfectly to the world they are in, in Dark Souls. They have their own behavior and personalities. You can approach each enemy with a slightly different strategy and game will reward you. 
And then there's Lords of the Fallen. There are parts of the game with zero contribution to the story and the journey. Your only objective is to reach the next location. This part in particular was one of the most underwhelming sections in a Souls-like I have ever experienced. There are regular enemies just waiting in bulks and in the background there are ranged enemies constantly sniping you from a mile away. I get it, it is difficult to fight a group of enemies when there are a bunch of ranged enemies also spamming projectiles, but this model loses its charm when you do it the entire time. Do you want to come up with a strategy? Well, too bad you can't, or I should say you don't need to. It is the same weak enemies placed in the exact same way with the exact same moveset, and just like the previous 20 encounters, there are these same ranged enemies spamming same projectiles. Everything is same, just the background is slightly changed, and it just becomes repetitive and boring. Like when I fight these packs of enemies, I don't think it is difficult, I just think it is frustrating. Imagine the Honor Londo archers, but instead of that one part, they wait at every single cliff. Yes, it would get boring instantly. When you fail to design complex enemies, you rely on overwhelming the player with constantly outnumbering them. Not only it makes the enemies overly repetitive, but it also makes your world feel small when you make the players fight Jimmy from local gas station for the 50th time. Making encounters unfair is one way of creating an inorganic difficulty, another is the damage numbers. This is something Jedi Survivor does a lot. Wait, I actually need to buy this game quickly so I can showcase. Wait, $70 still? No, it's not happening. This is something Jedi Fallen Order does a lot. It's like going through Shadow of the Earth Tree with zero Shadow Tree blessings, but it is the default setting for the entire game. Think of difficult Souls bosses, Nameless King, Sister Frida, Melania, Mesmer. Each boss has more unique moves than all 200 Assassin's Creed games have combined. Difficulty comes from variety and timing, but the way Souls likes, such as Jedi, approaches, you put regular enemy with bare minimum amount of moves you crank up the health and the damage by 500% and call it a day. Is it difficult? Absolutely. Do you know what else is comparatively difficult? Watching a paint dry. There's the same amount of surprise element to such enemies and paint drying. Fighting Melania for 10 minutes straight can be fun. There's a lot of things happening. But fighting a frog with just two moves fails in the fun department. I don't care if it will just one-shot me. It's not the way I enjoy the difficulty setting. Designing bosses may even be the most complex part of a Souls game. It even took from software quite a while to perfect their game design. And to this day, they are still experimenting a lot to improve boss fights even further. Gimmick fights evolved from Dragon God and Bad of Chaos to Rikert and Divine Dragon. Don't ask me where Bad of Chaos footage is, I'm not going through Lost Isolate for 5000 views, okay? Dragon fights started with Hellkite Drake and Seed, then it evolved all the way to Miru and Bale. Designing a good boss fight is difficult, and even Elden Ring failed it with underwhelming duo fights. I'm talking about this because I want to point out how challenging the development process can be. So even though there were some terrible bosses such as Gnome from Last Hero of Nostalgia, I won't talk about the design problems of smaller indie titles, because once again, this is a difficult topic. Instead, I want to talk about a triple A Souls like Lords of the Fallen, again, and how developers approach the boss encounters. It was a $60 title that came out in 23, so it is safe to treat it as a premium product it is. If I exclude Elden Ring's side bosses and Dark Souls 2 in its entirety, in From Software games, you usually encounter one masterpiece after another. Dark Souls 3 bosses are one example to this. In souls like such as Lords of the Fallen and Neo, it is usually not the case. To make a good boss, you have a checklist you need to meet. A good variety in moveset is crucial requirement. As the game progresses and player becomes more familiar with the game, your bosses also need to adapt to the improving player's skills. Dark Souls 3 is master in this matter. Early game bosses such as Gandir and Wars can be extremely intimidating for the players because of their scary moveset, but they are designed in a way to train in the players. Moves are easy to read and quite easy to avoid. Margit is another example. As the first proper boss of the game, his moveset showcases Astus Punish, Delayed Attacks, Quick Attacks and Phase Transitions. A hundred hours into the game, you see all of these mechanics in their true form against end-game bosses. 
In most Souls-likes, bosses rarely have more than a handful of different moves. When every single move feels and plays the same, they all make the fight one-dimensional and forgettable. But Lords of the Fallen still shows they are more than capable of making great bosses. They just don't want to. Harrower Dela is a great example of this. It is a boss fight that makes everything right. Fun moveset with a lot of variety, boss changing between range and melee attacks in addition to the area attacks. When the game understands a boss fight, you end up with amazing results like this. Lords of the Fallen has one or two, Lies of P has so many amazing bosses, but the complexity of a well-made boss fight needs to carry over the entire game. It shouldn't be limited with a single encounter. Another key for a boss fight is interesting backgrounds. Ivory King, Slave Knight Gale, Artorius, Midir, Mesmer, or it doesn't even need to be a major boss. Think of Bell Bearing Hunter from Elden Ring or Armored Warrior from Sekiro. A good boss needs a good background. You can't just put a fancy health bar at the bottom of the screen and call it a boss. Now most people don't read or follow the lore of the bosses, but you don't need to learn every single detail about a boss fight, you just need enough clues to understand that boss. When you beat Armored Warrior, the question arises, who is Robert? Like my dude, who are you? Why does he have a western greatsword and plate armor unlike anyone else in Ashina? Or Bell Bearing Hunter, what is he doing in that castle by himself, why is everyone else is dead, why does he have an executioner's sword even though he is not an executioner? Once again, Lies of P does this pretty well. When you see Parade Master or Scrubbed Watchmen, you instantly have an idea about the things that went down in the city. When you slay King of Puppets, you see streets filled with puppets mourning his departure. A good boss needs connections to the world it lives in. When there's a random knight waiting in a remote room for his turn, it takes away the experience. Dark fantasy setting may have a default Evil Knight design, but if you can't support the look with proper gameplay and background, design by itself will only show the lack of passion put on the title. I won't keep this video too long, I guess I can summarize it as misunderstood difficulty model, greed and lack of passion put behind the project, but this is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and sub, well, actually never mind.